Good day, boxing fans. Tomorrow night, Friday night at the Olive Convention Center in Durban, it is the return of South African boxing's two prodigal sons. I'm talking, of course, about cruiserweight contender Tabiso Mkunu and welterweight Tulani Mbenge. And they will be facing two visitors. It will be South Africa versus Argentina when Mkunu takes on Yamil Alberto Peralta and Mbenge faces Leandro Fonseca. If that's something that you're interested in and want to break down the fight with me, stick around. Okay, let's start with Tabiso Mkunu, who will be taking on Yamil Alberto Peralta over 12 rounds for the WBC silver belt. Now, that's a stepping stone to another world title shot. We know Tabiso Mkunu. He's been the mainstay in the world top 10 in the cruiserweight division. He's had his ups and downs. He had his disappointments. He did challenge Alexander Usyk for the WBO world title. And in his last fight more than a year ago, he lost a split decision in a challenge for the WBC world title against Ilunga Jr. Makabu. Now, he was very unhappy about that decision. In my opinion, I think, I think to me, that fight Tabuiso Mkunu just edged it. But it was a close fight. And if you in close fights, in world title fights, and you're up against a promoter's guy like uh, Makabu at that time was promoted by Don King, then you can't leave things close. So, in the end, it was what it was. Makabu was busy, busy and threw a lot of punches, even though they weren't always effective, and that got him over the edge on a split decision. But it was a heartbreaking loss for Mkunu to take, as you can imagine, to get so close yet so far, with many people f thinking that you did indeed win the fight. But that's boxing. You know what you're up against. It's not always just the guy across from you. And uh, I'm not saying it was out and out robbery. I thought it was a legit close fight. I gave uh, Mkunu an edge by one or two points. But in my opinion, in that fight, he maybe just wasn't busy enough. He just needed one more combination per round, and then I think he would have easily won that fight. But it is what it is, and we're back now. And now the question is, is Tabiso Mkunu still a contender for world honors? Can he still fulfill his dream of, of winning a world title? And uh, can Yamil Alberto Peralta, the Argentinian fighter, up in the apple cart. Now I took a, a bit of a look again at Peralta. He's obviously he's got a much, be, a much big height and reach advantage over Mkunu, but Mkunu is a short, stocky fighter. He's always at a reach and height disadvantage. So that will be nothing new for Tabiso Mkunu. So it's not even worth discussing that. But Peralta is a kind of fighter. He's got a good record: 16 wins, one loss. Nine of our 16 wins coming by way of knockout, and his only loss was against Ryan Ro Rosicki in Canada. And that was a rough and tumble sort of fight with a lot of uh, strange refereeing decisions and so on. So it wasn't a, 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 a bad loss, if you can put it like that. But Peralta is a rangy fighter who likes to fight from the outside. He has a long left jab and he's consistent with that jab. He controls you with a jab and he's got a kind of a looping right that he throws to the, uh, he throws to the body and he throws it to the head as well. And if you come in at him, you've got to watch his left hook. He can catch you with it. So he caught and pot shot at Ryan Rosicki several times in, during their fight. But Rosicki is a straight up kind of fighter, whereas Tabiso Mkunu is a sort of awkward sideways southpaw, lots of blocks and parries and, and sort of shoulder rolls, that Mayweather thing. He does that with quite good effect. So Mkunu is, is going to be a much harder target for Peralta than Ryan uh, Rosicki was. And Peralta has mostly fought in, in Argentina. So what, uh, what, what I like about both South Africans in, on this tournament, um, Mkunu has competed at a much higher level than Peralta has. He's, he's, he's fought a who's who on the international scene. Sometimes it didn't work out for him, but he also scored some very good victories on the road against Eddie Chambers way back then, all in the wire, Duradola, when Duradola was still a pretty good fighter. 
good wins in Russia against Denis Lebedev and the Olympic gold medalist uh, Evgeny Tishchenko. And to me, Peralta, there's still similarities with Evgeny Tishchenko and Nkunu got over the hill there and got the victory against Tishchenko. So it all depends on Tabiso Nkunu. Is his head still in the game? Does he still want to go for a world title? He's fighting in, in front of his home crowd there in Durban. How would that have, have affected his training? I'm not sure if he trained in Durban or he tra trained up in Joburg, hopefully up in Joburg without all the distractions. I'm not sure. But, you know, will he be complacent? And the thing that I don't like is the fact that Nkunu hasn't fought for more than a year. That ring rust isn't a good thing. But then if I look at Peralta, he's not the guy with a kind of power that can knock out Mkunu. Mkunu's weaknesses uh, has always been he hasn't got the greatest of chins when you do catch him. His first fight against Makabu was a war and he, was, he did very well early on and then Makabu clawed his way back in the fight and eventually uh, knocked out Tabiso. And uh, the second fight was way different. But if you want to beat Tabiso Mkunu, if you're not Alexander Usyk, but well, no shame in losing to Alexander Usyk, who in South Africa uh, active today has fought an Usyk type of fighter, you know, um, no shame in that. But if you're not Usyk, how do you beat Mkunu? Is you drag him into a war of attrition like Makabu did in the first fight and you set a high pace that he's uncomfortable with. Because the other thing with Tabiso Mkunu, if you make him fight at an uncomfortable pace, if you can control the pace, fine, he's going to go over 12. Make him uncomfortable at a high pace, war of attrition, then he starts gassing out late in the fight. He's not going to win a fight like Evander Holyfield did in that first fight with Dwight Muhammad Carvey. He's not that kind of guy. So for Peralta, he's going to have to have success with his jab and right hand, but I can't see him having success with that because I've mentioned before, short fighters that are successful at a world-class level, level like Tyson, like Mkunu, like Baby Jake back, Matlala back in the day, they know how to get past the jab. If you can't do that and you're short, stocky, stocky guy, you're not going to get too far. So that jab of uh, Peralta, he's not going to be able to dominate Mkunu with that. Mkunu would slip it and parry it and toss it with his glove over his head. I think that's going to work for Peralta. And then it's the right hand and the left hook. So he's going to have to catch Mkunu coming in. And uh, Peralta also is not a guy with a very high pace, he's a steady pace. So he's not going to do this war of attrition thing. So I think it all depends on Tabis or Mkunu. I think Peralta might steal a few rounds, but what I've noticed with Peralta was as well in the Roziki fight, if you fight him on the inside, he doesn't like that at all. He likes it there at arm's length. As soon as you're on Peralta's chest, um, then he stops fighting, then he tries and holds, holds you and mauls you and, and then the fight gets sloppy. So I think as soon as Tabiso closes the distance with Peralta, it's, it's going to get ugly, I think. But at, at that close range, Tabiso is going to dominate Peralta as soon as he is at close range. And you know, I think Peralta will hold a lot and he'll try and pull him down and he'll do all sorts of tricks to get out of trouble. But I, my, I think after Tabiso gets into it and he shakes off the ring rust, if he's anything like the fighter we saw against uh, Junior Makabu in the last fight, or the fighter that we saw in his best victories, he should have a beating of uh, Yamil Peralta. Now, so that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that uh, Tabiso Mkunu is going to win a unanimous decision, uh, a clear unanimous decision, and a fight that I think might get a bit ugly uh, at certain stages. But as soon as he closes the distance on Peralta, Peralta, I don't think he's going to get, get the on, have an answer for him. Tabiso must just watch out not getting caught with that looping right on the button or with a left hook flush as he walks in. So he's got to be on his P's and Q's and he's got to be sharp mentally to not get caught. And if he does that, he controls the distance to the inside. I think Tabiso is going to beat uh, Emil Alberto Peralta. Guys, if you watch that far, please punch that like button. And also let me know in the comment section, who do you think wins, Tabiso Mkunu or Yamil Peralta and why do you think so? Then that's, there's another fight on the card and that is the welterweight bout between Tulani Mbenge and another Argentinian, Leandro Fonseca. Now Fonseca, once again, a guy with a good record, 18-1-1 with nine knockouts coming here to, to, to fight Tuls Mbenge, who's also been out of the ring for more than a year. So once again, Mbenga has fought good opponents, you know, the likes of, uh, you know, still world, uh, former world-class fighters like Gabriel Diego Chavez, Israel uh, Vazquez, 
these these kind these kinds of uh, or Miguel Vasquez, the Tierra Vasquez, these kind these, these kinds of fighters. So and he's and you know he's, he's been around the top level in his last fight. He lost the majority decision to Salomon Tisoko. Uh, it was close. I think that Mbenga didn't do quite enough to win that fight. You know, for me, Chisoko eked it out once again. Work right. I think his other loss against Sebastian Formella in Germany, to me, I think Mbenge actually should have got a decision there. I thought he did enough to eke it out against Formella. I don't think he did enough against Chisoko. But now we have Mbenge against Leandro Fonseca. Now, what kind of a fighter is Fonseca? From what I could get, uh, get uh, footage of Fonseca, what I like about Fonseca, firstly, is he's busy. I like the high work rate. But I don't like for him in this situation, he hasn't had the same sort of opponents that Tulls and Benge has. And the other thing about Fonseca, I don't think he's the puncher that Tulani and Benge has. And Benge can whack, and that's a nice thing to have. We seem to have a shortage of big punches here in South African boxing these days. I just get that feeling. So we know what Mbenge struggles with. He struggles against tricky boxes that move a lot and that are busy, like uh, Formella, like Chisoko. Now, Fonseca is busy, uh, but he's not tricky. The way I see it, yeah, Fonseca comes at you, he throws combinations, he has his hands and his guard nice and uh, reasonably tight, but you, he's there to be hit because he goes bum, 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 and then he stands there and he admires his work, and the other guy punches him back. Now, if you look at his, his only, only loss was against his countryman, and that was uh, Jose Angel Rosa, and Rosa is still an undefeated fighter of a high knockout ratio, and so that was, that was, that was a, a loss against a very good fighter, but when he fights a fellow undefeated guy like he did at that stage, he, he comes up short because he takes punches in return and the other guy is landing the harder punches. And uh, he's gutsy, he's Fonseca, he stays in there, he takes his shots, he looks like he's sort of, uh, not wobble, but you can, you can see that he's feeling it, you know, but he, he's, he's, got, he's got the heart to pull himself through it and then he gets you with work right. But Fonseca tends to just either stand there or he steps straight back. Stand there or straight back, come forward, the other guy hits him and then he goes back with five punches. Sometimes he'll, he'll move to the side, but he's not a guy that's good on moving with the angles. He's not a guy that stays on the back foot boxing too much. And that'll suit, suit Mbenge. If, you, if you're going to stand there and fight with Tulani Mbenge, that suits him. So what I think is going to happen here, I, uh, I think Fonseca... He is going to is going to outwork Tulani Mbenge for a while, you know, because the thing of Mbenge, he's got good power, good power on the left hook, good power on the right hand, good uppercut. He's got all of that. I think he's he's got a good chin. Um, he's not the quickest guy there always, and sometimes he follows the guy around the ring too much, looking to land the big shot, you know. But as I've said, Fonseca is not going to use the ring as well as Formella did or as, as Chisoko did, and I, and I think that'll work in his favor. So for Fonseca to win this fight, he has to keep busy, that's a good thing. He'll have to more use his jab and, uh, and exchange less, and he'll have to have better footwork, better angles, and is he gonna have it now at, at this stage of his career? Uh, I'm not so sure. So I think that the ring rust will be a factor once again. Mbenge might have less ring rust to shake off and Tabiso Mkunu because his style is one that's not so much reflexes and boxing based. But I think for that, when he's, when he's shaking off ring rust, Fonseca will outwork him. He might steal a few rounds. Um, but I think at a the, at the, at the point they're going to be exchanging and Mbenga is going to land the harder punches than Fonseca. And I would think Mbenga is going to need to dig him in the body, but it's, it's going to take more than one shot to get Fonseca out of there. But I have a suspicion, I saw Fonseca sort of quiver when he gets hit with short shots in some of his previous fights. I think Mbenge will eventually start uh, catching Fonseca often enough. And my feeling is that this will, this will be a more fan-friendly fight between Fonseca and Mbenge than Kunu and Peralta. Because of the style of Peralta and Kunu, that style, that, that, those are styles that could make for an untidy fight. But I think Mbenga and Fonseca, Fonseca is going to create a very, very fan-friendly fight. And I just think uh, Tulani Mbenga is the stronger guy of the two. And I think he's going to break through at some point. And I think he's going to hurt Fonseca. And I think he's going to have a power to get Fonseca out of there. So I think uh, Tulani Mbenga 
by stoppage in eight rounds. Once again, tell me in the comment section, who do you think, Mbenge or Fonseca, and why do you think? But what I do like about the tournament with uh, the Olive Convention Center in Durban Friday night is, I believe it's also being broadcast on SABC. Um, I'm not sure of a time, if you know, post it in the comment section. But I do think for a comeback fight, for these two guys that have been sort of world-class operators, and um, um, Kunu as a two-time world title challenger, for these kind of guys, uh, the, the opponents that they are facing, records of 18-1-1 one one in the case of Fonseca, 16-1 in the case of Peralta, um, these are guys that's coming to win. There's a lot of stake for, for them too. It's another WBC belt on the line when Mbenge fight as well, I believe. And this is a kind of fight that can get land you a world title shot eventually. So I think these fight, they're fighting guys with good records and they're fighting guys who will be coming here to win all the way from Argentina. So I think for two, two, two operators like them who's been off for more than a year and then their first fight back, they've got tough opponents in front of them. I think both Tabiso and uh, Tools, they are, they are in quite tough uh, Friday night against these Argentinians. I don't think it's easy fights for them as all, but that's what, but that's what we want, competitive fights. So I'm looking forward to Friday night. And that's it from me, guys. Please remember to subscribe. And until I see you again, remember to keep those hands.